there are often many hurdles to overcome for those living with the effects of stroke. And one in particular only adds to the many physical challenges that stroke can bring. It's called spasticity. Spasticity is the result of a neurological disturbance due to damage or injury to the central nervous system. People with head trauma or multiple sclerosis, as examples, can also experience spasticity. For stroke survivors here in the United States, just about 17% will develop spasticity around the one-year mark after the stroke occurs, resulting in about one million adults dealing with a post-stroke condition. There are different classifications of spasticity, depending on where it's dispersed in the body. The term focal distribution indicates that spasticity is isolated. It is considered a local motor disturbance that affects only a single part of the body. Regional distribution is a motor disturbance that involves a large region of the body. And a generalized distribution involves widespread regions of the body. Although focal spasticity can sometimes lead to a regional or even generalized distribution, most post-stroke patients experience only the more isolated focal type. Having spasticity exclusively in the lower limbs is extremely rare. Only about 1% of stroke survivors who experience spasticity will have this type. 10% will have upper and lower body issues, and 7% will have upper body spasticity only. There are six basic upper body patterns of spasticity. Rotated shoulder, a flexed elbow, pronation of the forearm, flexing of the wrist, clenched fist, where fingers are jammed into the palm of the hand and thumb and palm. Spasticity tightens the muscles, tendons, or ligaments, preventing normal movement, which can reduce the range of motion. If left unattended, these contractions can become permanent resulting in more deformity and increased disability above and beyond what a patient's stroke may have created. The challenges spasticity patients face are great. It's not surprising then that the treatments used to combat this disease need to reflect how tough the problem really is. There are various ways to address spasticity, from medications to special robotic devices that create muscle motion, helping affected muscles to relax. Through these approaches, medical science is learning how to effectively counterattack the symptoms of spasticity. When one is treating spasticity after stroke, you want to be able to target the muscles that are overactive and causing the problem. Usually the first course of treatment is rehabilitation, physical therapy, and occupational therapy, which can continue and in fact should continue for some period of time. Other avenues of managing the effects of spasticity include the use of robotics in physical therapy, such as this stable flex device, which helps blood flow and also helps in preventing muscle atrophy. This device works well for patient Jennifer Saad, who has difficulty extending her fingers due to muscle tone. So it's teaching her how to relax her tone and the stretch in her fingers while also getting her to extend and open her fingers. Perfect. Here, patient George Crisantho wears a robotic mechanism with a triggering device that presses against his triceps and detects any activity in his muscle. If he should try to straighten his arm, the device will pick up that signal and the machine will assist him in extending his arm a little further. Different exercises are used to employ this device. Kevin Malone is a former New York City firefighter who had a stroke one day while driving a fire truck. The purpose of Kevin's electronic device is that with the repetition of movement it creates, his muscles will begin to reconnect with the brain and slowly, over time, may help allow him to make these movements on his own. Other methods to manage post-stroke spasticity include oral medications that are less targeted to specific muscle groups intrathecal medications, and surgery. But no matter the method experts choose, one thing's for sure, there seems to be a toughness of spirit these patients have that rises to meet the challenges of this disease. Although treatment following a stroke has improved, many of its side effects can remain for a lifetime, 
including post-stroke spasticity. Experts agree the way to turn this around is to address the problem of stroke in general. Many of the risk factors for heart disease also apply to stroke, such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and a family history of the disease. To avoid post-stroke consequences, doctors encourage eating healthy, low-fat, low-sodium foods, getting lots of exercise, and having regular screenings by a healthcare provider. To answer any specific questions you may have, be sure to contact your healthcare provider.